just to go over the season a little bit, um, you know, I think we had some highs and we had some lows. And what I mean by highs and lows, we had some really good highs that we were great playing great. And then the lows that we had were really, really not very good. And the teams that we've had here in the past that have been really, really good and competed for championships and played in the tournament, played in the NIT, I think the highs and then the lows were about right here. So that made, we were pretty good. And um, with a young team, we got to get back to that. So I think with the experiences that our guys gained this year, uh, with a young team, it's going to help us going forward. And uh, that's my responsibility as a head coach here, and I understand that. And I own that. We got to get better at that. So um, excited about what's going on. Uh, we had two first team selections coming back to our team uh, that we've never had for next year. Um, so we got all ten guys coming back. Um, with with all my player meetings done, we we have nobody leaving uh, other than Cullen, um, and then JJ's graduating, so he's going to go play somewhere else. Um, it kind of hurt us this year with Devin Williams' injury um, more than we thought it would. And then also with, with JJ not playing and Nick leaving it that break uh, helped us with our, it kind of hurt us with our front court depth for practice and also in game. So uh, we finished 17 and 15. That's not what we expect here. Uh, that's not what I expect. Um, and going forward, that's what we're going to continue to try to get better to compete for championships and playing in postseason. And being in postseason, being in the NCAA tournament or the NIT, um, but really excited about next year. Uh, really excited about getting to work. Our guys are already started working. Uh, they started working on Wednesday. Uh, we'll do individual work starting on the fifth through the seventh for three weeks, and then they'll go home. So, um, all in all, we did a really good job academically. Uh, broke another record academically, and that's one thing that's important to me. But basketball-wise, I think. Um, our guys did a good job. They worked hard, um, and then we just had some lulls that didn't work out, and we ended up finishing fourth in the conference when we were picked six. So there's some progress there. Um, the progress that I think we made when I talked to you guys last year, I think the biggest progress we made that we talked about is we had to improve our shooting. It's the first time that we've been here, um, you know, and I'm not going to get into that. I've been a part of it for six years with Steve. And then three years of my head being a head coach, and I've won one championship, um, and we got to get back to that. Um, the the thing that we've done that I talked to you guys last year is we were first in shooting field goal percentage, and first in three th uh, free throw percentage, which never happened here. So we improved on that. The things that we have to work on, we got to be better defensively. And my staff and and I've been working since the season's been over. Uh, things that we have to work on. Um, things that we have to improve on the defensive end, and hopefully with our guys maturing, they'll get, get some toughness that we need for uh, road wins and uh, playing better late in the year with their experience that they obtained this year. So um, that's about it. Um, you know, Cullen's leaving, um, JJ's leaving, which I said, and then um, one thing that I did, Elijah's going to put his name in the draft. and. Gene's going to pass out some things for you about the rules uh, for that, and he's just going to go do some workouts, and his his mindset is to go see where he is, and then hopefully he's going to come back. Um, but he's doing team workouts. Um, he's working out with our guys every day, so uh, we'll see where that goes, and then hopefully he'll be back. But, you know, I'm really excited about next year. I'm really excited about going forward with the recruits we have. I think we've got three outstanding recruits. Uh, we have one scholarship left, and we're, we're uh, actually really working hard to fill that scholarship, and that's one reason why I had to change the press conference a little bit because i got to get on the road. But um, I think the biggest thing is I know where the program is. I know where we're going. I think we have done a really good job. I'm excited. My staff's going to be back, so it's going to be the first time that uh, – the three years that I've been here, I got my staff back, um, which is really good because I'm really excited about them. They do a great job, and uh, we're learning as a group, and I think our team's learning. And the biggest thing is I'm going to learn. I learned from this year. I learned from the year before that, and we'll continue to work hard to, to get back to where we need to be. Coach, you, you alluded to it, and 
I, I know Paul has said the same about the uh, postseason and kind of where the bar is set with the NIT. Right. NCAA. Um, you've also had a colleague recently, and in, in Yvonne um, recently let go, and at that press conference, Paul really set the standard for what he expects of the two basketball programs. What what should fans expect next year of these basketball programs um, of, of yours? I'm not asking you to speak on the women's one. Um, but was the bar set in, in Paul's comments that another year of what of mediocrity is is as a word he used around 500 for the women's program? Do you expect that you have to do better next year? Does a trend have to start showing improvement to continue here? Oh, I'm expecting to do better because I know what our program is. I, I think that was after you know four or five days of discussion with Paul and Janice that you know I felt that way. Um, I think our program's come a long way in the 10 years that I've, it'll be 10 years coming up. I've been here 10 years and I think where the program was when we got here, uh, the great job that Steve did and um, you know I was very fortunate to take over a really good team that I helped recruit, helped develop and had a really good year and then um, we've had a we had a down year my 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 second year um and we know what the limitations were on that team uh i think the guys coming in i, I don't think anybody in this room expected tim williams and eliza brown to be first team all league um and now we've got to keep developing the guys around them uh, and keep developing them and i think the bar for our program is postseason is invited postseason and um you know, after after the game uh, in the Mountain West tournament, I think your emotions taken, and, and you always want to, uh, with a young team, you always want to keep playing. But at what expense do you want to do that? And and I'm not one of those guys that's chasing wins. Um, and I I, I don't think uh, the guys that came to play for me here expect to play anything less than those tournaments. And I think going forward, that's our goal. Uh, my goal is to get us back in the NCAA tournament. It always has been. It always will be. And I have to own that. And I'm responsible for that. And, and I'm looking forward to the next season. I'm looking forward to my staff getting to work with our guys. And anytime you have a core group coming back like we do, uh, I'm excited about that. And, um, you know, I, I think we all learned from this year. And I thought we had some really good moments. And I think uh, they learned from experience. And I think that's going to help them. What's an off-season need? You said you're going out recruiting. I mean, for this coming season, what do you think is an off-season need? Well, I'm, I'm looking at transfers, and I'm looking at point guard. Uh, and hopefully in the next, you know, two weeks, we can obtain um, one of those guys coming in to visit, a couple of those guys coming in to visit. Um, and then we're just we're looking at every option to make our program better. I like my group. Anytime you have a group coming back, you got Sam coming back, it'll be a three-year starter. Um, you got Eliza Brown and Tim Williams who were first team, which is outstanding. I think Jordan Hunter's ready to evolve into a really good point guard. Uh, hoping move move forward with him, and I think he can do that. I think he learned a lot this year. I think all the freshmen that came in and Anthony and Dane and Jordan had a big learning curve. And I think if you ask them, and you know, I'm sure uh, down the road they'll say that you know that that first year is the toughest year as far as learning. And I think they did a great job. I thought Dane Kuyper was our most improved player this year. Um, so, you know, we're going to try to try to shore up some issues we have. Maybe look at a big transfer. We're looking at some things, but really excited about Connor McDougal coming in because I think he's really going to help us with the front court. He had an outstanding career at, at South Mountain. He took them to the tournament. Um, he's player of the year in that league. Um, and then with Damian and, and Ahir, I think they're really, really good kids that are going to be great players here. You mentioned uh, obviously you're looking for a guard in this recruiting process. Right. That's because your starting point guard has decided to transfer. Yeah. Um, why, in, in the press release, nothing was specifically said as to why um, you and he both spoke to how appreciative he was of playing for the Lobos. In the right. Days. Why is Colin transferring? Well, I, I don't think it's a why. I think the biggest thing is my, my wife and I are really proud of him. I mean, you're talking about a kid that graduated here in three years. Um, the unique thing about Colin is he had a great – great three years here he played two um he grew up here um and i just think he he's looking for a new opportunity and another place to go get a master's degree i think the biggest thing with him is the unique thing about him that i'm most proud of he's only one of four players out of 4500 division one players one of four that had a 3.8 started 25 games and averaged over 12 points now 
you can't be proud. I got. I can't be more proud than that of what he's done here. Uh, he scored 674 points, um, which is is really good for a two-year player and almost 200 assists. So, you know, I'm just proud of him, and and I have to you know wish him well. And now I'm going forward with my team, and um, you know I, I'm helping him with the process. And the biggest thing is I'm just worried about my team right now. Is there any resentment that? He had to leave after. No, I've been here for ten years. We we got great fans. Uh, we're going to end up being you know twenty third in the country in fans again. Um, you know I've been here ten years. We love the community. Uh, we know what it's about. Um, and there there's you know I'm the coach here, and I'm the coach in New Mexico, and I'm not looking to coach anywhere else. So um, I take I take that on three years ago. And I've been here a long time, and, and hopefully we can get it back like it was my first year. And that's our plan, and we're excited about that. And I think my staff's excited about that. But, um, you know, I wish him well, and, I, you know, and, and I, I'm excited about next year for us. Coach, did you try and convince Colin to stay? How did you handle that? That's all, it's all about Colin. It's all about Colin. So, you know, again, I'm just proud of him, and uh, it was really brave of him to make the decision that he made. And he's got to do what's best for him. Elijah, you mentioned entering his draft. He's evaluated NBA talent. Right. And been through it with Tony and that sort of stuff. Right. Do you think he's ready for the NBA game? We've been very, well, the biggest thing is I think it's we're in a unique situation because it's going to help our program. Um, you know, we had Darrington that went early. Uh, we had JR drafted in the first round when nobody thought he would get drafted uh, when we first got here. Um, and then, you know, Alex's situation, Tony's situation. So we've had some experience with that. Um, Gene passed out the new rules. The new rules is, is beneficial for the student athlete. It gives them um, till May 25th to decide if they're coming back. And Elijah, I met, we've met three or four times and I've talked to his father. And I think he just wants to see where he is. But I think the biggest thing is he's showing great leadership with our team. And I think he'll be one of our leaders. Uh, next year, I think Tim Williams could do that also, um, and you know I, I'm giving him a lot of credit because he's working really hard with our guys. Uh, he's involved in all, and he's just going to see what the workouts are about, and then and then we'll make a decision. He'll make a decision on May 25th. But uh, if he's not where that we think he should be, or his family thinks he should be, then then we're real excited for him to come back and lead our team next year. I mean, he's he went from seven points a game at Butler to having a really good year, and you got to give him credit. He, he earned it. He worked hard. He's a hard worker. He's one, probably the hardest worker we've had here in the gym. Um, but he's in a great situation, and I told his family that. I think the biggest thing that I'm happy about is everything that I've told their families and each of those kids, Tim Williams and him included, have kind of come true on how I thought they could fit in our program and what they could do for us. And, um, you know, that's always a positive. It's not a negative. So uh, we'll help him and support him in any way. And, um, you know, in a, in a selfish side, I hope he, he's back and leads us to a championship and, and we have a really good year. But uh, we'll support him and do whatever we have to do. You mentioned that these are player-friendly rules. The yeah, they are. I mean, it's like, it's like Coach Cal said, he's going to have all his guys go. Right, and, and, and they might as well. It is the point with At the least goal. look. Don't, the unique thing about it is, and I was in it for 10, uh, the unique thing is we could have 100 underclassmen. And there's only 66 that get in the combine. That's counting foreign kids, lottery pick kids, and um, seniors. So it'll be unique to see what happens. So what is the challenge then that that presents to you as a coach? Maybe Elijah's case is a little different because I know he wants to get the feedback and kind of right. take that and maybe learn from that. Right. Um, and I think it gives I think it gives any player that opportunity, Jeff. I really do. So you as a coach then, do you even kind of preventatively – recruit as though he may not be coming back or no. in this case do you go ahead and count on him coming back and is he still involved in team see all team workouts you said? everything okay. yeah he's he's involved what we've done with Elijah is we set a schedule for him where um, we go Monday Wednesday Friday lifts and then Tuesdays and Thursdays individuals and he'll be a part of that and then whatever we have to do extra we'll get him as much we'll get him trained like we did with Tony as much of the pre-draft stuff and anything that he's going to see and I think that's one reason why Tony knocked it out of the park because we trained Tony um, to be ready for anything and I think Tony was really prepared when he went into that and we'll do the same thing with Elijah. Is the risk of this new rule uh, 
obviously player friendly, as you said, but is the risk for the player now? I mean, Kendall left school to start working out for it. Alex left school to start working out for it. Tony left school this semester to start working out for the combine. Players are used to doing these workouts kind of on their own time. Is the risk then that they're not going to be going to class and may not be eligible? No, I think that's one thing that Elijah's mature enough. He's matured enough to know that he's going to be going to class and he's going to stay here. Uh, if anything, if we're out of town for the Final Four, um, I'm sure his dad will be in here to help him. And the best thing about him is he's not going anywhere, which is that's that's the decision we made or the decision that his family made. Does he have an NBA skill set, Coach? Well, I mean, he's he have, you know he's arguably the third or you know he's right up there as the top three players in our league, which is really really good. And the numbers he put up, he his skill set is he can make plays and he can get to the foul line and he can shoot the she can shoot the ball. Now he knows what he has to work on and and will continue to do that. Your, your name is. Popped up this last week with the Georgia Tech job for obvious right. reasons. Have you talked to them, or do you have any? Interest? I'm the coach at New Mexico, and I'm happy to be here. And you know, I'm excited about our program. I'm excited where our process has taken us. Um, you know, if you look at it, I'm not real, real excited about our win-loss total this year. But I am uh, excited about where we were a year ago. We ended up finished fourth, and we're a couple opportunities away from being where you know, competing for that championship or a couple other plays, but. Um, you know, I know where we have to go, and it's been a process for us, and I think it's going in the right direction. If I didn't think it was going in the right direction, then then I wouldn't say that. But I feel that we're making the, the progress that we need to make and uh, take a step next year. With Oklahoma's success, there's been some resurfacing of comments that Buddy Heal made about what he had to do as a freshman to, mm -hmm. to be where he is now in his career. Right. You talked about the development of your freshmen and what they might do this coming season. Mm -hmm. Are we too impatient with freshmen? Because of the one and done, because of you know, the success of the teams with the one and dones and the, and the five stars, are we too impatient with freshmen? Well, you brought up Oklahoma, and, and I think the biggest thing is, is they stayed the course and they went through the same thing that we've been through. Maybe not the lost, you know, the, the records, but those guys were once like my team. And if you look at the teams in our league and you look at the teams that have been successful, like we beat Northern Iowa by 19 points at home, and but they started four, four seniors. And if you look at Oklahoma's team, um, they're a veteran team. And um, I'm hoping next year and the year after that we're going to be a veteran team and we'll be able to do that. I, I don't think we're impatient. I just think expectations sometimes um, are a little bit more than need to be. But expectations are good. Expectations and and caring about the program, the passion for the program is important. And that's one thing that we have here. The youth was kind of like, a, it seemed like a recurring thread throughout right. the whole season. And you touched on the shooting. It won't be anymore. It can't be. <laughs> How far would you say the team has come from? My team your, your now? Team, your team. They've come a long way because you didn't know what to expect. I mean, when you start three sophomores, uh, one junior that's never played in our conference who ends up being first team, a uh, junior that's never started more than 35 games in O. And then you're coming off the bench with um, two sophomores and X and Joe. And then you have three freshmen are playing that I think they've come a long way. I think they've learned. I think the best thing about June and July for us is, is having them in the gym and, and progressing and, and pushing them forward. And that's going to be key for us. And, um, you know, they're – they're sophomores now, and they're, they're juniors now, and some of them are seniors. So uh, excited about that opportunity. It did seem like there were certain fans, I mean, at least listen to you know, some of the, the radio stuff and the sports speak, I mean, you can't take that for what it is, but it did seem like some of the criticism about talking about the youth so much that it was kind of became an excuse after a while. Was that a fair criticism? I don't think it's ever been an excuse. I think it's just a fact. When you're the youngest starting five in our conference, and uh, if you look at our teams, I think that's just um, – I, I think all the teams, if you look at them, they're they're pretty veteran laden. So it, it it is what it is. I mean, that's just what we had. Do you do anything different uh, for this coming season uh, to avoid uh, any late season downfall? I mean, last year. Well, I think the late season downfall that that you're asking about. I think the two years ago with the team that we were below 500 one game or two. I think that was just we were limited. We were limited in, in, in what we did and what we had, and, and our shooting was limited, and I think that was affected. I think this year, I, I think um, after the San Diego State game, I think a lot of our confidence, a lot of our swag, a lot of our air went out of us. 
and we didn't recover. Um, and I think with the experiencing that, I think that's going to help us. I think in February, I think uh, my first year we were six and one, but there's there's a reason why we were six and one. We had veterans, and we had guys that had been through it. They've been through the they've been through the battles. They've been through the games. They've been on those road trips. Um, you know, to be honest with you guys, we've won 24 games on the road in the last few years, and there's not more. You know, in three seasons, that's that's only Steve's done that. So we have to get better, and I know that, and I own up to that, and, and we'll continue to do that. But I think they're only going to learn from what happened this year, and that's what I'm counting on. And I think um, – and, and it didn't help, and you don't know scheduling, but you played two teams at home that you usually think you're going to win those home games, and Fresno was playing at a high level, and they made the NCAA tournament, and then San Diego State is San Diego State, who had a great year. You talked about the need for improvement, which is – no different this year than any other year. You're obviously always trying to do that. Um, is there anything specific? It's going to be defensively. It, it, it's it, going to be defensively, and I think we've worked wise? on that. I don't think we'll change scheme-wise. I think we have to get back to being tough-minded man-to-man team. I think we got to be able to change up things when uh, and play zone. But I think our guys have bought into knowing after my, my season-ending meetings, I think they bought in to know that we have to get better defensively and we have to be more consistent on the defensive end. Uh, our numbers aren't where they want to be. They were pretty good, but uh, they can get better. And I think we have to be – I think everything that we talked about getting better offensively and, and possessions uh, in a game and, and shooting, we address that. Now we have to address everything about what we do as a team. And I think defensively is going to be one of the things we'll, we'll talk about. So and, wanting to be a tough-minded man-to-man team. But I think that comes or, with maturity, Jeff. I think that comes with maturity being together. That was the first time they've, they've experienced these things together, and I think you'll learn from experience. And I asked you this late in the season, though. You have a roster made up of players that are capable of being absolutely really good man-to-man team. Absolutely, and we have to work on that. I absolutely, I absolutely believe with, I believe that, and I and I agree with you. And, I, and that's one thing that we're going to concentrate on. You mentioned the consistent dramatic swings this season. Did you ever mm-hmm. feel this year your team had an identity? Well, I, we had an identity that we could score. Um, I don't think we had an identity identity because of our inconsistency. Um, I think our identity when when I've always wanted to play and have play an exciting brand offensively, but I think at the same time when you have some lulls offensively, you got to be able to stop people. And I think our guys got to, and and me included, um, and I've got to teach them and I got to keep coaching them that that's one thing we got to work on. Have you met with uh, Paul? Um, about mm-hmm. the end of the year evaluation. Yes. What did he say to you um, about his expectations for the coming year? Um, he didn't really talk about that. I mean, that's that's kind of Paul and I's meeting. Do you look at this coming season as a make or break kind of year? No, I'm signed to 2020. So my goal is to, <laughs> to do really well and coach and be here till 2020 and farther than that. So. Um, that's my goal. That's why I signed my contract was to be here. So uh, I plan on being here. Do you have to be kind of your, your biggest critic in situations like I've that? I've always been my biggest critic. So I've said that several times. I, I'm my biggest critic, and I think we evolve as coaches and we learn as coaches. I think when you stop thinking that you can learn and get better and evolve as a coach, I think then, then you're just you're, you're looking for um, failure. And I and I'm not going to do that. I know I I know I have to get better. I think I learned this year, and I think I'm really excited about what we got coming back, and excited about next year's season. Yvonne felt like she was kind of blindsided by it all. Yvonne's a great person, and she's she's a quality person. She's meant a lot to this program. She's she's from here, but you know I don't I don't know what took place there. I just you know I, I, she's been great to work with, and um, you know I wish her the best, and and I'm sure she'll be at our games and. Uh, we've known each other for a long time because my boys played for her brother. So um, I don't, I'm not going to get into that part of it. If you're your biggest critic, mm-hmm. what's your biggest criticism of your first three years as coach? Probably having too much success my first year. <laughs> 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 but I mean, God, I mean, I, uh, to be honest with you, I'm excited about my team. I'm excited about what we're doing. I'm excited about my coaching staff. Um, I'm excited where we're going. Uh, I think my kids are really excited. 
Um, I think the biggest thing is I knew it was going to be a process, and I said that last year, and I said it the year before when we struggled. And I'm just staying the course. And staying the course meaning I know what I'm doing is right. Um, do I have to improve and, and get better? Yes. Do I have to help my team get better? Yes. Um, but I'm staying the course um, uh, and really excited about that. Really excited about the progress and, and hopefully we just continue to make steps in the right direction. Two topics of kind of non on the court type questions yes, I want to ask you. One is um, tickets were down, uh, sales were down a little bit. It happened nationwide, it wasn't just here. right. You guys are still top 25, I understand. Right. What can you as a basketball coach do? Is there anything you can do when? to try and get fans back before the season? Oh, I think we're going to look at all those. I think we're going to look at all the things we can do. I think we're going to we're going to look at some things, and and I know Paul and Brad are going to work really hard to do that. And uh, you know, I think they're going to look at everything and and try to figure out how we can improve that from a student standpoint, also from a season ticket standpoint. Um, so I don't think any stone will be unturned in looking to do that, but. You know, Jeff, you can you've you've studied it and went over it, and and um, we still had great crowds. We still had great support, and I just think it's it's with TV now, streaming now, and a lot of things. I I just think it's it's down nationwide, and and we're going to try to do whatever we can to improve that. The you second kind of off the court question I want to ask you about is is something that people have criticized you about, um, and it's in these press conference settings. Do you feel you've been overly critical of your players at times? Not really. I don't think I've called anybody out by by name. Um, you know, it's it's on me. It's not on them. And it's my job to get them to play at a high level. And um, you know, it's it's one of those things where we have to do it. And uh, we'll continue to to do it as we and um, going forward. One follow-up on the, the attendance stuff, specifically about the students. Why do you think that the students weren't coming out to the I don't. Games? I don't know that. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know that. But I think we'll look into that. But I think that's, you know, something that we have to look at. Getting back to Elijah, do you have any sort of uh, timeline or specifics as far as anything that's already set up? Or well, he, he he has to he has to pull his name out the twenty fifth of May, yeah. and so we'll know we'll know where he is. By the 25th, and we'll probably know before that. What you do is you put your name in the league, and then all 30 teams give you feedback, and then he'll do some workouts and try to get in the combine, and then we'll go from there. Any workouts been scheduled yet? Or no, anything? no. We just met uh, yesterday about it because I had this press conference, and I wanted to get everything out and had player meetings and trying to figure out um, who's going to be here. But excited about our group. Excited about all of them coming back. How big is it going to be over the summer having the assistants back and player development? Same good. Same it's going to be really good. It's going to be it's going to be nice to have every office full. So, but you know, I, I I've had great staff here. You know, Craig Snow's doing a good job at Highlands, um, and Drew's doing really good at Bradley. And then Lamont, you know, he had a learning process this year at San Diego, and he's back at his alma mater. So, um, that's a great great opportunity for those guys. But uh, I got a really I got a great staff. And um, I'm excited about going forward with them. Coach, just thoughts on the conference all around in general. I mean, do you think San Diego should have got in as well? And yeah, I think they should have. But, but that's not. I mean, if you look at it, you know, this is just speculation, and this is just my opinion. I mean, we were 27 and seven, 15 and three in the league, uh, and won the conference tournament, the automatic qualifier, and we're a seven seed. So that makes me a little nervous when San Diego State goes 16 and two in our conference and has a good team and um, doesn't make it. But I think, you know, we'll, we'll address those issues at the league meetings and, and, and try to get better as a conference, and I, and I think we will. At those league meetings, you're going to have two new peers, two new coaches. Um, what do you know about starting with the Allen Edwards uh, at Wyoming? Great player at Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Played for a dear friend of mine, Frank Martin, in Miami. So I think Allen's been there. Um, you know, I think he'll be a good coach. Um, uh, so he's won a national championship and excited for his opportunity for him. What about Chris Beard? Do you know anything about Chris Beard? You know yeah, he's with Coach Knight. So spent a lot of time with him when Steve and I would, would visit with Coach Knight and uh, had a really good year at, at Little Rock and um, 
you know, it'll be interesting for him at, at UNLV. Surprised at all that the running Rebels went with the guy who was ranked 345th in tempo? That's not my. That's not for me to get into. <laughs> I'm worried about my program and where we're going. Coach, uh, you mentioned about Connor McDougal. Mm -hmm. I think people want to know about the recruits more, and you said that he's the player of the year. What about the other two recruits? What can you tell us? And well, I how think are you going to be able to I help think Damien. I think Damien, this is my opinion, just I think Damien should be Mr. Basketball, but I don't think he'll get it. I think Kyle Guy that's going to Virginia will get it. I thought he had a great career there. Uh, he's long. He's not as tall as Tony. Very similar build. He can really shoot it. Um, just intangibles with him because he can really defend. Um, he knows how to play. Now it's going to be a learning curve for him, and that's why we want to get him in here in June so he can learn the offense and do those things. But all in all, I think he has the ability to be a really good wing player for us. And then Ahir is kind of one of those guys that nobody really knows about. He's a super athlete, um, and I'm really excited to get him here. I think he can be really good. Uh, he's he's probably, besides Sam, probably the most explosive athlete that we've recruited. Um, but he's got a great body. He's 6'7", about 2'10", 2 2'15". So he's the big wing that we like, and um, I think his, his ceiling is really, really high. I heard it, uh, that he was one of the top, ten, they have 10 top players in Canada, and he's the only one that didn't go to an academy. He went back to his school. Would you have had anything to and do And also, with that I got to tell Coach Davey, his brother is huge. He'd be a heck of a football recruit. But, um, you know, he, yeah, he's just he's just one of those kids that has worked for everything that he's, he's needed. And uh, he, he just wants to be here. His family's very appreciative, and, and I think he's one of those kids that everybody's going to be surprised on his ability. Just to make sure on something you just said on Damian Jefferson, um, Mr. Basketball in Indiana has a long history of some, some pretty good names. That's not just a coach. Well, Alan, Alan could probably tell you more about it, but I, I grew up there too. But I, I, I would think that he's, I think he's one of the top two or three, if not the best player in the state. And I really believe that. Now that's just because he's my recruit, but I also, from if I'm looking outside and watching him play, um, I think he has a chance. I think he had a great high school career, and I think he, you know, he's going to make the Indiana All Star team, and I think he'll be really, really successful in that game. How much of that, if he's top two or three now in your mind, was he top two or three at the beginning of his senior season? How much did he get better? I think he got better, but I think a lot of people didn't. There, there's a, and uh, I don't know if you know that much. But there's a distinct difference in Indiana and then we call it the region and the region's up northern um, and, and they don't get a lot of interest they got great players they've always had great players I just it's basically centrally located in the Indianapolis and in that area and um, but I gave Steve a hard time because he was Mr. Basketball my year and that he was from closer to Indianapolis than anybody else but then he reminded me that he had 37 points a game and without the three-point line so I kind of, he deserved it. Being based on player of the year, I was hearing that it's a lot has to do with who wins state championship. Yeah, maybe. And, and Damien got beat. So, okay. and, and you know, it's it's one of those things. But I'm really happy where he's come, you know, where he's, where he's gone, how much better he's gotten, what he's done with his team. Um, and I think he's just one of those kids that wants to be here and he's excited to be here and we're glad we have him.